Okay, so greetings everybody. It's a little bit later in the afternoon. I've come down out of the cut, descended in elevation a little bit to the town of Kanab, Utah, which is kind of a tourist hellhole. It's one of those places where the words stunning vistas get uh, way too overused. The entire economy here seems to be based around tourism. You got, you got half the area kind of filled with the uh, new age creeps and uh, the other half filled with the uh, uh, rednecks that, of course, refuse to wear face masks despite there being a respiratory pandemic going on in the country. That aside, I did want to take some time to show you uh, this area, especially since they seem to uh, be in the midst of building a, another uh, hideous and uh, vitriolic, at least on my end, uh, suburban tract house development here. So I figured I'd get a couple shots of the floor growing here before the houses go up. You can see they got the infrastructure laid in. Uh, you know, what we need is maybe a further economic collapse to maybe delay this to development a little bit more. But, you know, there is no delaying the inevitable. The tumor shall continue to grow. There is no stopping it. It's kind of sad to think this will just be tract houses someday. You know, such a beautiful area, it's hard to imagine the human bleakness that you normally associate with the suburbs uh, taking up residence here. But anyway, let's take a look at the flora. Here we go, Petersia thompsonii. Now, it's kind of hard to imagine this isn't just an astragalus, a.k.a. A loco weed, but you got to look at those uh, stipules right there. See those stipules uh, subtending those branchlets, okay? As well as... Uh, Get a look at the flower here. I mean, they, they pretty much just look like astragalus flowers. But, uh, oh, the, the scent coming off this thing, though, it is, it's covered in glands. Uh, and it uh, oh, exudes a really foul smell. Very foul chemical. You know, probably, uh, probably immensely toxic. I'm sure this is one that the cattle avoid. Faboidea is the subfamily. Fabaceae, the pea family, is that a family of this guy right here? Let's uh, take a look at one of these uh, Corollas. Peel down one of these banner wings and keel assemblages. If I can get this guy down one handed, maybe not. Might be kind of hard. God, I'm just getting my hands covered in this. It fucking stinks. It's a very smelly plant, okay? There you go, I got that, uh, those wings and that keel pulled down. You could see the 10 stamens in there. Uh, as well as uh, that ovary, which will later mature into one of, uh, see the ovaries buried in there. I'm not going to show you that. You're going to just have to fucking use your imagination, I guess. It would, that ovary will, of course, mature into one of these fruits, as you could see. These little uh, plump capsules filled with uh, uh, two dozen or so tiny seeds inside. Let's crack one up and just see what it looks like. Regardless, you could tell this is at least a very closely allied with the genus Astragalus. Who knows, maybe it will one day even be lumped into it. Once somebody does the uh, molecular phylogenetics, there's all the seeds in there. Not quite ready yet, as you can see. Each one about five millimeters Five millimeters long. God, you know, this fucking stinks. Oh, this little, a bunch of little beans inside. Petersia thompsonii, the lesser known beans. And over there you got the, the member of the Asteraceae, your Agutiaresia. Probably Sorothrae. Hard to tell though, because they don't, they flower, you know, in late summer. Bunch of little yellow uh, daisy flowers, tiny ones. You know, but this, this plant's a uh, pretty common uh, throughout the southwest, especially the Four Corners region. Let's see, when you see this uh, pink sandstone, you see some indiscriminate, wiry-looking, bright green shrub. Probably a good eresia. And over here, of course, we got another uh, Stan Lea, probably uh, just Panada. Brassica family. Brassicaceae. Six stamens, four petals. Look at that racine. And there you go, one of the blazing stars. But beware, because that, uh, that, that common name, blazing star, can refer to plants, uh, a genus of plants, Liantris, in the uh, sunflower family as well. Another good reason to stay away from common names. Anyway, there you go. Menzilia, uh, probably multiflora right there.
then these are the genus velcro leaf family and uh, you can see these leaves are very very velcro can you hear that very scabbard again everything in this family has leaves like that just covered in tiny little barbed uh, hairs that, that don't hurt but they certainly will stick to you uh, and stick to your clothing beautiful goddamn family though dozens of stamens in those uh, flowers and then of course there's the fruit just a little capsule okay but you know not gonna be here for long because uh, you know the suburbs are coming boy that's an ominous warning if I've ever heard one huh okay and then uh, looking at our old friend dietaria canescence Dieter Dieter maybe like Dieter like a German art critic like a sassy German art critic or perhaps one of those uh, gay techno ravers that you all love so much. And who doesn't love them? Dieteria Canescence. Uh, and that's, that would be who it was named after. Actually, I'm just kidding. Dieter. I don't know who Dieter was. Was it Dieter? What the, I could look this up, but I don't really care that much. Because I see this plant everywhere. Still a lovely plant, though. Got those yellow disc florets, purple ligules, multi seriate and voliker. Look at all those phyleries recurve, looking like little spikes coming up. Nice. And look at the uh, leaves. Well, there's not much to look at, but... Uh, you get the idea, there's the seeds right there. You could, you could come and grow some, you know? Maybe ask the residents of those tract homes behind me if they want to do any native plantings. They probably don't. They probably just wish they had a lawn. That's depressing, isn't it? Anyway, coming over here, look at the Areogonum you got. You got two species of Areogonum. You got your Areogonum corumbosum, okay? Areogonum corumbosum, pretty common one, pretty common. Still beautiful, not flowering yet. But you can see those uh, that chalky green color, which we're familiar with, which, which we're so familiar with here in uh, the southern area of Utah, right near the Arizona state line, okay? Xeric Southwest Plains, always got that chalky color. And then you get up close and you can see they just got, look at all the goddamn hairs. Look at that, especially on that abaxial surface. All the fucking hairs. You got hairs on the stem, hairs everywhere. Nice fucking uh, umbels of an inflorescence. It's a compound umbel right there. That's pretty nice when the flowers is going to be even nicer. You're going to have a bunch of little tiny uh, flowers on there. Another species of Areogonum right here. You get this guy all over the place. I've been seeing them around a whole lot. You got glabrous green stems. Glabrous green stems. Okay, spank your ass with that because you've been a naughty prick. And then look down there and you got your, again, that chalky green tomentose hairs. You got hairs on everywhere. On, on abaxial surfaces, adaxial surfaces, everywhere, okay? Everywhere. These leaves have a fucking... Uh, Petiole got like a, yeah, he's say about like a three or four inch petiole. Okay, the neighbors behind me probably calling the cops soon, so I should jet out of here in a minute, but I want to figure this one out. Now, I'm guessing this is Areogonum thompsoniae, which seems to be is somewhat of a narrow endemic. It's stuck on a, you know, stuck on a, hugging the Arizona state line. Okay, you get a, you get a, you're going up in a Utah a little bit, you go north into Utah, but it does like the Colorado Plateau, likes the higher elevations. Again, we are at about 5,500 feet right here. Now, look at the color of this soil. You got that red sandstone, probably because it's got hematite in it. You got pretty iron rich soils. You also got God knows what other chemicals leaching into it, which have been diffused over the past, I don't know, 200 million years. I'm guessing this is Triassic sandstone, but don't quote me on that. Either way, it is pretty fucking old, okay? It's not those young volcanics you get in this area intermittently. But uh, look at that. You can tell this soil is just chalky as hell, okay? Chalky as hell, salty as hell. Got some gypsum in, in it right there. Look, I pissed right there. It's also got some urine in it, too. Anyway, Areogonum thompsoniae. Yeah, these are both perennials. Again, it's a little earlier for these to be flowering yet, but god damn, they're going to be stunners when they are. Beautiful fucking native plants. If you live in a region, you should grow some of these. Maybe make you feel a little bit less like dying, you know, when you realize that you live in a place like that. Okay? Am I too mean to the suburbs? Okay, it's deserved. It's deserved. I know what it's like. Okay? It's bleak. It's spiritually depressing. There's not a lot there to work with. Anyway, moving on. Here we go. Right there, you can see where that chalky blue color is coming from. It's from that layer whatever that is a, a change in the depositional environment uh, in the early jurassic perhaps late triassic and so uh for whatever reason you get these blue deposits maybe an actual geologist not just a, a amateur jack off one like myself can comment and uh, leave some commentary as to what that could possibly be again we got a species of ambrosia here kind of a kind of a, a weedy native and some uh Pinus edulis up there. Just these beautiful canyons, okay? 
There's a thousand of them in this area, but each one's equally fucking beautiful. There you go. There you go, salt cedar. Highly invasive non-native plant, the bane of anyone who's botanically inclined in the uh, American Southwest. Almost looks like a conifer, but it's not. It's uh, from the more uh, arid regions of Asia. It's, a, it's fucking horrible to rip out, though. It's a pain in the ass. Now, see, it's a... What the fuck is going on with that root? Look at that root. It's like a strap-shaped root. You can see it's already been cut, and, of course, they just re-sprout. Now, you know, this is one of the reasons I do, and do, and I do endorse the use of Roundup, okay? The fucking hippies hate it. They think it's like the pleated uranium, but you know, I hate to tell them some of them are morons. They just don't understand how bad invasive species can be for the environment, especially when you see a goddamn wash that's just choked out with fucking tamarisk. Nothing else can grow there because the tamarisk is so thick. Look at this uh, Castilea, though. You got a three-foot-tall Indian paintbrush, three-foot-tall Castilea, Oral Bankasia is the family, and guess what? It's parasitizing the Gutierrezia right there, but it, it also could be parasitized into a dying ephedra. Uh, probably not. It's coming out of right there. So, I mean, you know, I know guys who grow this, okay? You grow that plant, you got to grow with the nurse plant, too, because, again, it is a, a hemiparasite. It can photosynthesize on its own. That's why it's, it's green. It's got the chlorophyll, but it's also stealing a bit from uh, from its fellow plant. It's a nearby plant, its neighbor right there. Could this be a linear folia, probably? I've got a beaks. Oh, that's nice. Who doesn't love a cast of land? Okay, and uh, wrapping things up right here, we got a species of salvia, salvia dorii. It's not flowering, oh, it's well past flower. There's the calices. Do we got any seeds in there? No, not that I could see. It smells absolutely fantastic, wonderful plant. You got your opposite leaves, typical of Lamiaceae, the mint family, as well as your uh, in inflorescences that are verticillasters. You can see they're just whirled around the stem like that. Salvia dorii is pretty common in a great basin in the American Southwest, especially at the higher elevations. Okay, and here's a plant that you might encounter and not know what the fuck it is because the leaves of this species look very unlike the leaves of any other species in the genus. This is a species of ash, and it goes colloquially by the name single-leaf ash. You can see why. Unlike uh, many of the other species in the genus Fraxinus, which is in the olive family, Oleaceae, uh, this does not have pinnate leaves. It's just got single leaves. But look at those goddamn fruits, and it's unmistakably a Fraxinus. Okay, and you see this, this is very common in the deserts here. The high, dry deserts of northern Arizona and southern Utah. There's those fruits right there, those little Samaras, little winged flaky bastards, and there's those leaves. Okay, you show this, look at this, to show this to someone that lives in like Illinois or Minnesota or what this shit. All right, Tom, it's an ash, it don't look much like it. But uh, the bark course uh, is a little bit more of a giveaway too it does look like ash bark very glabrous no hairs pay attention to the uh the branching the branching texture the branching structure you can see those axillary buds right there all right very common tree okay should be planted out more i bet it's a fucking butte when it's uh, flowering you know it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a way down. Anyway, here's another common one, common throughout the American Southwest. This is Euphorbia fendleri. It's one of the tiny spurges. Look at that blue leaves, blue opposite leaves, with that uh, red margin. How about that? Fortunately, they're a little too a uh, little past senescence. You know, can't show you any. Oh wait, there you go. You got a fruit, or is that a, just a Ovary maturing or what? Same thing. Not quite a fruit yet, though. Not, not a mature fruit. You gotta love Euphorbia's poinsettia family. So anyway, here you go. You got more of that Pteria. It's a lot larger than any, any astragalus I've seen. So I guess it's noticeably different from that genus. But still, you know, it's got to be pretty close to it uh, phylogenetically. Anyway, you can see it's a... Uh, it already, you know, the seeds are already mature, and these are a little bit, uh, a little bit later in the stage of maturity than the ones I showed you back down the ridge. Probably just because they're exposed to more heat up here. You know, they don't have the shade of that canyon that you do behind me. You know, where it's kind of ensconced in a little nook. So there you go. There's the fruits. Tons of seeds inside, and I'm just gonna take a handful of these and uh, sprinkle them around on my way back to the truck. You know, give the plant the chance to establish a few more of itself, at least before 
the uh, the track has come. You know, the suburban lifestyle, <laughs> the indignant suburban lifestyle, home of future Karens. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Hope you uh, enjoyed yourself. Hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, go fuck yourself. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Now, now, why, why are you doing it? Why'd you gotta do that? Does it does it look like it's actually? It don't look like it tastes good. Why'd you do that? Okay, I don't know why you did that. Who said you could do that? Did you get you got a permit to do that? I don't think you got a permit because I know how many permits went out. Okay. I was going to call the warden on you, okay, because I know what you're doing. i seen you guys coming through here, and i seen them come through last week, and they did the same thing, okay? Someone took a shit on the stairs. i seen it. I know exactly what you did, okay? And you're not going to get away with it no more, okay? You can't do that in DuPage County. You can't do that in DuPage County, huh? Huh? I don't care who you are, okay? I don't care what you've been doing. Or what background you are, okay? You guys come through here every goddamn time. Been cleaning up since since forever after use, okay? Beer cans. You got you. Someone who's taking craps over here. I seen that. Okay, that's right. I you think I don't see you, but I still do. Just get out of here. Just go up.